this past year kind of focused a lot on leadership. Um, I think the culture of the team, um, I think that's a big reason why we've had success in the pool um, and on the diving boards. Um, you know, and we're, we're just trying to make that push to kind of get bashed back to that, you know, like a national ranking or a regional ranking. I think that's really important. I think we're at that stage now where we can make that push a little bit. And I do think the incoming freshman class is really going to help us kind of elevate the program. I think with the freshmen this year, we have the possibility of taking that next step and swimming faster and pushing people in practice and being able to post faster and faster times. Um, I think individually for me, it's looking at records and for the team as well, looking at records on the board and taking those relay records down and trying to send people to nationals would be pretty, pretty cool for our team to do. I think most of it's just come down to hard work. Uh, you know, you can, you can worry about the other things, but I mean, the, big, the bulk of it is, you know, who's ready to show up, who's ready to work hard every day, try their best every day. You know, you, know, you have a bad day, you come back in the next day, you just try your hardest. You know, just keep pushing. Um, I think that's kind of something that's a big part of the team culture right now is that, you know, everyone's here to work as hard as they possibly can. And I think that's kind of why we've had, you know, a lot of success these past couple of years is just everybody's willing to work hard together. You have kids from bigger club programs that are used to a lot of yardage. Your kids from like lower club or programs that are used to less yardage. So you kind of got to meld that. People that have only done freestyle, people that haven't done stroke specific stuff. So kind of our program, they know on a weekly basis what they're getting on a Monday, what they're getting on a Tuesday. Not the specific workout, but they know, you know what that day entails, whether Monday's a freestyle day, Tuesday's a sprint day, an IM day, Wednesday's a recovery day, and so on and so forth. And I think they adapt fairly well to it. And I think with the rigors of the academics here, you've got to have a good plan in mind <laughs> for training. Yeah, so the, the academic culture definitely is pretty tough, right, when you start as a freshman. It's something you've never had before uh, for most kids. So one thing we do to try to, you know, help the freshmen along is, you know, we kind of have them, you know, have people reach out that are the same major, you know, make those kind of connections so they know, okay, I can ask this person about, you know, what's, what's some good classes to take, you know, can you help me out with this homework? I know you've done it before, you know, ed everything from advice to homework help. So I think just kind of having a wide variety of upperclassmen that are willing to reach out and help these underclassmen and, you know, mentor them and everything from advice to just straight up homework help or tutoring has been definitely beneficial. I feel like we've kind of increased our academic strength these past couple years by having a bigger focus on that. I think that's like one of the best things we do as a swim team. The upperclassmen really take care of the freshmen. That's with, before they even come here, setting up schedules for the first semester. That's with uh, giving them what professors to take classes with. That's back work. And then we hold study hall every Wednesday night. So like the captains, the seniors come, and like all the freshmen will be there. And we work on homework. If anyone has questions, they can always come and ask. Does study hall does help because it helps them see other people that are good at certain classes, whether you're good at physics, an upperclassman might be good at physics, that can help out, um, you know, the underclassmen, what professors to take, what classes to take, um, you know, and that avenue of help is out there, because um, sometimes everybody doesn't seek help, um, you know what I mean, so they know that there's 30 other guys on the team that are going to be there for them. So one thing we really work on is getting kids used to swimming in college because everyone's come from all sorts of different backgrounds and we're, you know, right here we're all doing the same training program which everyone might not be used to. Uh, so we do spend a little bit of time uh, getting the freshmen kind of used to that. Um, we do that in the weight room too, but in the pool, you know, it's getting everyone on the same page, the same basis, and then we can, you know, step up from there. And then I think, you know, you just have to trust the process and kind of go along with that, you know, the training and just keep trying your hardest. And I think that kind of all comes together at the end of the season. We see people, you know, go some fast times. I think, well, with swimming, it's an individual sport, but at the same time, we're in the pool as a team. So I think that camaraderie you build inside the pool, inside the weight room, um, it may be not necessarily trying to, you're not trying to take everyone's background per se, but you're trying to feed everyone into our culture that we're, we've been building as a team. We had our big event in April last year, and I think the opportunity for the current team members to speak with the older alums, even from, you know, the 80s, um, the 60s, all that kind of stuff, the 90s, 2000s, was really important just talking about the legacy of the team and what legacy each class is leaving as they graduate. So I think that is important with the history of the program and, up, and upholding that as we move along. For me, just seeing all the different alums from different years, just like the alums from maybe four years ago to the alums that graduated eight or even 20 years ago and being able to talk to them and seeing like, oh, do you guys still run up the stairs next to Blitman before the season starts? It's like, I didn't know we did that. That sounds like a lot of fun, you know? 
or just the different like traditions they used to have and to see what we still continue to do or what we've kind of added or changed. I think that was really funny to just talk to people and see how we've got Liberty Leagues. That's kind of the, that's the standard, I guess, goal. But uh, we've got a couple relays that over the past couple years have always been kind of right on the line of, you know, are we going to be able to push these kids to nationals? Um, there's definitely a couple kids on the team individually that are skirting the line for maybe qualifying, you know, getting more people with those B cuts so we can kind of get our name out there more and more. And that'll help just grow the program in the future, too. So I think we kind of have the goal of, okay, can we elevate to the next level? You know, can we place a little higher at MIT? Can we send some more kids to nationals? Um, can we get some men's relays to nationals? And then from there, that's almost like a stepping off point for can we grow the program over the next four or five years when we have our name out there a little bit more. Division three is super fast these days, men and women. Um, cut times are hard. Um, but I think, again, that's the next level for this men's team is we, we've got to start thinking like on that area. Um, you know, the first couple meets out of the box are going to be tough. RIT and Ithaca are always tough meets. Um, and then we have the MIT invite. And, you know, you're swimming MIT, top 10, Tufts, top 10. <laughs> um, you know, schools like that that have great competition um, and that can compete at that level. So that's a good way to measure where we are at that point in the season, what we need to work on, you know, moving forward on training trip to focus when we're rested in February.